What's up guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. Welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you guys had a wonderful Christmas and an excellent New Year start because we are now diving into our regularly scheduled Tech Tip Tuesdays and it's gonna be a whole lot of fun because we're right in the middle. January 8th, starting off a new year. It's gonna be a lot of good stuff here. So. I kind of want to break down a little bit first on some opportunities that we can talk about here going in the next couple weeks. Honestly, blackmouth fishing is one of the best things going on right now. Lots of fish are around for us to catch. And really, because the steelhead season has been so dismal locally, our hatchery fishes really haven't shown up, whether they're late or whatever may be the case. Right now, they've closed down the rivers. It makes it really tough. To do that so blackmouth has kind of been what I've switched over to and I know a lot of others as well because the success is there I mean yes everybody loves to fish but at the same time you like to bring something either home or catch and release something so for me getting out in the salt water having the opportunity to at least hook a fish seems to be a little more entertaining than that of just go river walk for a day I don't know about you guys but I love catching fish so with black mouth fishing being the case, one technique I want to focus on for you guys today is fishing bait in a helmet. Now, this is a really fun technique, so we're going to dive fully into this for you in this Tech Tip Tuesday. Can't wait for you guys to see this, so stay tuned! Alright guys, so we're talking bait in a helmet. Now this is a really cool technique and honestly what I'm going to start doing here is yes Tech Tip Tuesdays are going to continue as a regular schedule, but I'm going to break down seasonal wise some really great opportunities for fisheries. I mean we do still have steelhead so I have some opportunity videos for you there um, on technique specific. We have some on the water stuff as well. But I'm going to dive into kind of a series here for blackmouth. I'm going to kind of tech tip wise today show you how to get a bait head set up and be successful. So this one's going to be really cool. Um, a very fun technique that I honestly got shown a few years back. I've always fished spoons and hoochies really for whether any type of salmon. And I've kind of started branching out a little bit more and finding some very effective ways in doing some of these new techniques and I was shown especially in the last coho season how effective a bait head with a either red label herring in there or an anchovy can just outfish everything else on those certain days so the same thing can happen with black mouth and can be very very effective so the first thing you're going to, want to do is you're going to go to your tackle shop or look online and get yourself some bait um, herring heads, however you want to call them, helmets. So there's all sorts of different sizes out there. Personally, I have liked to use the anchovy bullet troll heads. They are very good stuff. Um, Gibbs Delta Tackle also has the oaky heads, which are really good as well, and some really cool colors. But really, what you want to do is find something in a pattern you're confident in, um, and can be really efficient and effective with. So I'm just going to grab one of these out. This one's a bull troll. It's a simple little head design which causes because of the way this is designed to give you that perfect spin like you would for a cut plug herring. And it has a little that little red pin there. You push that out and allows you to pin a herring or anchovy, whatever bait you may be using in there for use. Using a little makeshift reg label banjo minnow, you guys can see how this ends up staying in there. I mean, that thing is in the bait head itself, it's not coming out, and it will have some great action in the water. So we're going to go into the rig in this. We're going to go through everything here with you guys and showcase best ways to set this up and be effective. It's super simple. Don't need a whole lot of gear for this, but very efficient. 
And when the fish are on certain size of bait, this can be the best way to do it and minimize a lot of time on the water. So let's take a look. So you can take literally this bait head and we got our awesome red label herring substitute of the old banjo minnow. And we're gonna take this and showcase exactly how easy this is to rig up. But that bait will sit in there and I can yank and pull that bait, the head's pinned in there with that little red pin, and it will rotate just like it needs to. And guys, let me tell you what, this is a killer way to either fish just by itself, just the bait head on the leader rig, right to a swivel on your main line, no flashers needed. You can use a dummy flasher or run no flashers. You can even run this with a flasher. However you set up wise you want to run, a bait head by itself will be super effective. Um, so we're going to go break it down exactly how to set one of these up. Now I'd recommend by far the easiest way to store these is get yourself a little leader feeder here from Bendable Products. I can set up my top five or six colors that I want and you can really have everything ready to go. All I need to do then from here, I'm just going to grab the hooks off of this and all I'm going to do so I got head off it's going to lift and pull comes right out so then what I'm doing guys for my rigging itself I tie these about two and a half to three feet of leader that's the front end of the bait rig this then has a secondary section to it the secondary section is about another two and a half to three feet of leader. But I start with a ball bearing chain here, a bead chain swivel. Run that up to a larger size swivel there and I add a dual lock so I can easily attach it to the back of a flasher if I want to do so. So what that ends up creating is I can then take the tag in of the actual bait rig, I'll tie that to the bead chain swivel, and you're now left with a fully rigged deal ready to rock. The bead chain in the middle is crucial guys because there is a lot of spin and drag as you're bringing this through the water. So this line in the back because of the head is spinning on its axis really fast and as a result you want to make sure you're accounting for that and not having a bunch of tangles because your line is twisting up so I really have two points of emphasis to help with that the B chain swivel really is the first point and the secondary is that top swivel very cool super easy you can have a few or five or however many rigs all together um, I usually like to have some UV and glow colors. Um, you see the the white glow there. You got a green glow. You got some of these ones here are from Gibbs Delta. That is a glow herringade and a UV herringade. And then you got purple haze there on the other side. But keeping them on a leader feeder, I can tuck this in my boat. I can tuck this in the tackle box. What it allows then is just a quick, easy access. All the leaders are stored, easy. And then I keep all of my heads in a little tiny tackle box like so. There's a ton of great colors out there, guys. So really it's up to your own imagination, and you can have a lot of fun with it. As far as then we're going to go to rig this, I'm going to take our herring color, I guess you could call it, of Banjo Minnow. Most realistic to what you would have for an actual red label herring. So picture in your mind, red label herring, we're ready to go, got our rig, and we'll use this one for example since it's already there. You take that red little pin, you're gonna pop that thing from the backside out, and you're gonna hold on to that pin and not lose it. So I pulled the pin out. What this now allows me to do is freely slide my rigging up and down the line. I'll take my bait, 
I'll take the bait head, find a nice groove there, and it should tuck right up into the head. The next step, I'm going to take that red pin, I will find find that hole, it's going to push itself through and then out the back side there if you can see that. Now my bait is secure, it will not pull itself out. I can then pull from the leader's end all the way down to the hook. What I then do is I take a little toothpick because I want everything to be in the right position for the hook placement. Now this is set up for a green label herring, so I actually have this a little bit further back, um, but this will work with what I have here. And that toothpick, you can see, sets this up perfectly because then you will use that toothpick to pin the line, and you let that go, and just like so, that herring is going to go crazy. Those fish are going to come up behind it, put some teeth into it. You got a hook dead center of the bait, and then you got a trailer. Probably 80% of the time, you're going to get that strike with the hook up. They're not going to be missing it. It's a great way to do this. <coughs> Very simple. Again, just showcasing it here. The herring goes into the helmet. There's only really one way for this all to be rigged. You have a little line in the back here that this goes up through, tucks underneath, and goes straight up to the nose. Comes out the nose, and again, take your bait, slide it up in the head. And then insert the pin, and you are ready to go. Guys, I am so excited for what this is going to bring for this season because with Blackmouth being here and a lot of the fun that we're doing with that, um, I was really finding trying to ways to get more fish in my box. And I really think this is going to be a right way to start 2019 putting some limits in. So hope this helps, guys. We're going to be breaking down a whole lot more specifically on Blackmouth. So you're going to stay tuned. I'm going to do a whole series of videos on the water showcasing a lot of this, how to run downriggers in the winter, all these different things. We'll go through the whole gamut. We'll make this happen. So thank you guys so much. I really hope you enjoy what you saw today because for me, blackmail fishing is kind of a sleeper fishery. It really, for me, came just a couple years ago where I started getting into it, and, and I'm hooked. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love steelhead, but this year, steelhead is not where it should be. And to have another fishery in our backyard that's producing makes it enjoyable. I mean, the other day we were out, we hooked three, fortunately lost one good one to a seal, and had to let a couple small ones go. But that's part of the fun, is you're getting hookups, you're having a good time out there in the water. So I really can't help wait to to showcase to you guys a lot more on how to's for this. So we're looking forward to that. And if you have any questions or comments, please link them below. I'll put all of this information on the tackle provided down in the description. And you guys, give us a like and subscribe. Love you guys. Thanks so much for everything. And I cannot wait for 2019 and what's it's in store for Holy Moly. So thanks, guys. We'll catch you real soon on the water. Take care. And fish on!